Today we're going to be using sea creatures, Italian food, and supermodels to help you learn and remember the muscles surrounding the mouth. So let's get to it. Our first mnemonic covers the most superficial muscles that surround and act on the lips. To start, grab a piece of paper and then draw an oval. So this oval represents our first muscle, the orbicularis oris, which is easier to remember because it's circular like an orb, or you can think of it as a muscle that orbits the lips. From there, we add eight lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or if you think about it like an octopus, just remember there are eight legs to this thing. Now here's the mnemonic. Never let minors make risotto, always let mom. Now with all of my mnemonics, I don't just use the first letter of each muscle or else it would be impossible to differentiate them all. So these letters stand for the most prominent or unique part of the name. Our first muscle, starting up top and working our way down this way, is the levator labii superioris aliquae nasi. Now this name is so long, it might make you cry the first time you see it, but that's actually a good thing. This muscle actually resembles kind of like the path of a teardrop. So it starts and originates off the maxilla near the corner of your eye. It then runs down like a tear into your lip and nostril. And even though it's an intimidating name, it does make sense if you break it down. This muscle is simply a lifter, levator, of the labii superioris, which is just Latin for the upper lip, while alike nasi translates to end wing of the nose. So all it's saying is that it lifts the upper lip and the nostril, and actually creates this infamous snarl, which is also why it's sometimes called the Elvis muscle. For our next muscle, the L here is to remind us, because this is one of the main muscles with labia in its name. So this is the levator labii superioris, which simply elevates the upper lip. Next we have minors, and that's to help you remember the zygomaticus minor, which originates of the zygomatic bone. Make, also with an M, is for the zygomaticus major, which also originates off the zygomatic. It's just a little more lateral, it's bigger, and it's longer. One tricky thing about the major to remember is that in some people, it splits into two, which is actually why some people have dimples and other people don't. Regardless, on certain illustrations, you'll see the split, and it can kind of be confusing and make you think there's two muscles there. But don't get confused, it's just the major trying to act all cute, you know, with his dimples, but it's just one muscle. Next, we have risotto for the risorius muscle, which attaches at the corners of the lips. So this line, the fifth line right here, always comes right off the corner of the oval. The risorius pulls at the angle or corner of the mouth straight back and slightly upwards. It's also sometimes considered the joker muscle because it somewhat resembles his scars. Next, we have always for the depressor anguli oris, which depresses the angle of the mouth. Let is for the depressor labii inferioris, and that basically just depresses the lower lip. And finally, mom is for the mentalis muscle, which might just be the weirdest muscle in the body. Basically, it looks like an upside down sea anemone that originates off the middle of your mandible, right below your incisors. It moves inferiorly and then sprouts tentacles that attach throughout the soft tissue of your chin. And you can see this happening when it activates because each of these tentacles pulls to create these strange chin dimples. I kind of like this fact because if you've ever been nervous about speaking in public, just remember everyone there has a big fat tentacle chin and they probably don't even realize it. So it's like, who are they to judge, right? You know? Okay, so that is the mnemonic for the most superficial muscles surrounding the mouth, but here is the rub. There are two other muscles that lie deeper to the ones we just talked about that aren't part of the mnemonic, but you need to know them as well. So hidden underneath the levator labii superioris, if you cut that away, you'll find the levator anguli oris, which again is not part of the mnemonic, and you really won't see it on illustrations unless they have these kind of cutaways like they do right here. But just remember, the same way there's a levator labii and a depressor labii, there's also a levator anguli and a depressor anguli oris as well. And finally, the other muscle that is not part of this mnemonic because it's so deep and usually covered by other muscles and fat is the buccinator. So this muscle has three different origin points. An easy way to remember them is just to make a C with your index finger and your thumb and then place it up against your cheek. So superiorly, it originates off the maxilla, basically right around where the proximal phalanx of your index finger would be. Inferiorly, it originates off the mandible, basically where your thumb would be. 
And then the third spot is a tendon called the pterygo mandibular raphe, which basically resembles the uh, webbing of your thumb, except of course it's inside your mouth, as you can see here. But just looking at that C, it'll remind you of the three spots, and of course that webbing will remind you of the tendon, the pterygo mandibular raphe. From there, the muscle moves anteriorly and then inserts into the orbicularis oris, basically right around where the tips of your fingers are. For its action, the buccinator compresses your cheek against your teeth while you're eating or playing an instrument like a trumpet. One way to remember this is just to think of B-U-C from buccinator as bite your cheek, because again, it pushes your cheek into your teeth, allowing you to make a very handsome blue steel face like this if you want. Or if you're not paying attention, unfortunately, it can push your cheek right into your teeth and you'll end up biting them. So be careful out there, everybody. All right, so hopefully some of those tips helped you out. As always, thanks for watching. And of course, good luck on your next test.